Hey guys, what's up? So in the last video, we had created a Django project in the Movies 2 directory, and I'm actually going to um, use a tool uh, which is called an integrated uh, development environment. And I had mentioned this in the previous videos about how you can choose um, any sort of environment that you want to use. Um, in my particular case, I'm going to use Visual Studio, so it has built-in support to be able to run the application a little bit easier than actually doing the manual command of run server. Um, so I don't want to have to go through all that process of having the run server on the command line, so I'm going to do this, but this is just an optional thing, but I, I want to make sure you guys are aware of uh, what it is that I'm doing, so that way you're not like, well, why does this directory look different now? So um, I can create a, a blank Django project, and I can put it inside the uh, Movies 2 um, directory that we had created. So I'll go down here, uh, click on Movies 2, I'll give this a name. And we'll call it a movie, which I believe is what we had called it before. So I'll click OK. And this will actually create a directory structure for me. And I'm going to say put it in a virtual environment. This is also an optional feature. You don't have to do that. So what this thing is doing is actually going through and it's creating an uh, isolated Django environment inside of this folder. So that way, any sort of packages that this application uses uh, that I may choose to install, the um, packages are just going to be in that isolated version. So they're not going to conflict with other Django environments that I may have. And that becomes important once you start having multiple Django environments, uh, especially with uh, a lot of different you know dependencies and libraries that they might that they might have alright so this is gonna go ahead and um, it creates all the folders and everything I need so if we look at it should be the exact same setup that you guys had seen before where you have a, a movie app and then you have the settings which is the main app of the project if we look at the settings file we're gonna examine that right now uh, Django works with all kinds of databases out by default so you have MySQL, SQLite, Oracle and then Postgres and we're going to be using Postgres for this tutorial. I have another video that I'll link to in this video which shows you how to install Postgres on Windows if you haven't done that. Uh, but in short, we need to go ahead and create an actual database name that we're going to be using here. And that's where the name is going to go. So in order to um, create that database, let's go ahead into our PG Admin tool, which comes with Postgres. And uh, PG Admin is kind of like PHP My Admin uh, for MySQL. It just gives you a GUI, uh, which is just really just like a software console looking thing uh, that allows you to maintain your servers a little bit easier. So you can see that we have uh, one server, this Postgres, and that means Postgres is actually running because I've installed it. So I'm going to double click on that. And you have to put in your root password, and that actually asks you for that when you go through the installation process. And like I said, if you have any questions with how to install that, just see my uh, video, even if you did a, a quick search on you know, Chris Hawks and uh, Postgres, you'll find that video and uh, that shows you how to set it up. So we're going to go under databases and you have, I have a new movies database in here and we're going to create a movies to database for this tutorial series. So I can just right click and say new database and give it the name movies to and we need to assign an owner to it. So I'm going to actually assign the root owner that was created when everything was installed, which is just Postgres. And then we'll click OK. It'll create the database for us. So now you can see that we have a Movies 2 database in here. And if I go in here, you can see that there's like a schema, a public, and um, there's really nothing in there. So it's just a, it's just a blank database, which is what we want. So let's go ahead and um, let's go back to our application here. And in order to have uh, Postgres work with Python, uh, especially Python 3.5, since we're using the latest and greatest, we need to actually install a... Um, an extension so that works. So here's this link uh, if you want to copy this or I should probably include this into the video but uh, this educational website actually has a lot of 
tools that you need for actually for a, a Windows environment because Windows needs binaries in order for things to work, especially with um, some of these Python modules that require like C and C++ modules or um, uh, uh, compilers. I'm sorry, I couldn't think of the word. And since we're using 3.5 here, you're actually going to want to install this uh, executable down here, either the 32-bit version or the 64-bit version, whatever version of uh, Python you chose to install. I chose the 32-bit version of Python, so I would click on this one. You can see CP35 means for Python 3.5. So uh, if somebody's already done the hard work if you're on a Windows environment. If you're on a Linux environment, you probably don't have to worry about any of that, so uh, good for you. Um, since we're using Postgres, we need to go ahead and we're going to copy this little string that it tells you to do and you want to add that after the dot here so that way it tells Django to use a Postgres database. Now we need to give it the name of the database and that's going to be the name that we just assigned so it's going to be called Movies2. The root user, if you went through the installation process, your root user is going to be under login role. You can create additional login roles and use that um, user, but I'm just going to use Postgres which is like basically it can be considered the root um, if you've ever used uh, MySQL. So I'll say Postgres and then you have to put in your password and I'm you know for security purposes obviously not going to show you guys that um, on this uh, this video. But once you put that in your host and your port can be blank so you can just leave that alone don't worry about it. Alright so let's go ahead and uh, do a few more things here with our uh, website. We're going to enable the Django admin and that is not enabled by default, but you can see on a commented line down here that you have this uh, Django Contrib Admin, and we want to uncomment that in order to enable it. And we can keep all this other stuff the way it is for right now. Yeah, all, all this should be just fine. All right, so now that we have it, let's go ahead and open up a command prompt. And this is an optional thing that I'm doing right now because I have to go into my um, virtual environment since I chose to put the Django installation in a virtual environment. And if you didn't go this route, you don't need to worry about this part, but I'm just activating it right now. So go into the movie uh, directory so you can see your manage.py file. And what we want to do is we want to create a super user in Django. So let's go ahead, and this is the first thing you do whenever you create a database for the first time with Django. So we're going to say um, python manage.py and then create super user. And if you're using the latest uh, version of Python, you're probably going to get um, some some messed up stuff here as far as, like, uh, so let's see. See, it's actually missing the module that I had pointed to that, that we didn't install into the uh, virtual environment. So let's go ahead and try to install that now. And I'm actually guessing whether or not this is going to work, but we're going to try it. So depending on your Python version, which if you're following along with this video, you're using 3.5, but when you use pip install, it should actually use um, and find the module that's associated with your Python version that you're using. And that's why I said um, I'm hoping this works, but I wasn't quite sure. Sometimes with Windows, things are a bit of a pain in the ass, and you have to like manually install, and you run into the binary problem, and that's why they create those uh, executable files that you can just run uh, on your Windows machine. All right, so whenever th that happens, um, and that's such a pain in the ass, and that's a Windows-specific problem, so what we want to do is we want to go ahead and click on this uh, download file, and you're going to download this Python wheel file. Uh, go to your download directory where we downloaded the wheel, and it's right here. And we're going to copy that. In fact, I'm just going to cut it. I have two copies here. I'm going to delete that one. And let's go ahead and put that into our virtual environment where Python is installed and this is once again specific to virtual environment but if you don't have a virtual environment you need to go where the site packages are and I explained that in the first video 
uh, when we installed Python. I showed you where Python modules get put. Um, but in the virtual environment, they're actually going to be put inside where wherever we said the virtual environment should go. So it's going to be in uh, lib and then site packages. And that's where all your stuff goes inside the site packages. And we're just going to pay, uh, paste that wheel file that we downloaded. And now let's go ahead and um, let's go into that directory. So we'll go into the site packages directory. And now we just want to run uh, pip install and then the name of this file, which is long as hell, but we're going to go ahead and type that in. Uh, it says the file is not found. I must have typed it in wrong. One second. So I think I typed it incorrectly there. Okay, good. All right, that was a pain. Sorry about that. But anytime you guys have to manually install a wheel file on a Windows environment, uh, especially if you need like a Windows binary and you go to the education site and you download it, uh, that's how you manually manually install a um, a wheel file in Python. All right, so now you can see um, that that is now working. So if we go back to our uh, database location where we were before this whole thing happened. We need to go back and create our super user. And now here is um, a situation that occurs when you're using the latest and greatest in Python, and that's why um, you guys will hopefully be glad that I'm doing this tutorial. Um, this only occurs, uh, as far as I know, in Python 3.5 and Django 1.9, which are the latest versions as of right now. And um, what this requires is that we have to actually manually do a migration for uh, the sites and the auth user. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, let's see. The first thing I'm going to try to do is um, run migrate auth. So we're going to use this uh, built in keyword, which is uh, migrate. And we just want to say auth because this is the actual authentication table that we're running into problems with, uh, with Django here. So we run that first. And now you're going to get a new error that says uh, Django site does not exist. So now we need to actually run the same uh, migrate, and I think it's called sites. It might be site, I don't remember. Okay, it looks like that, that did work. And now we just need to simply say migrate. So we're gonna basically get uh, the auth, the Django auth to um, update itself so that way it works for the latest version of uh, Python that we're using. So now that we've done that, we should be able to run create super user. And now this will go through the normal process where it's gonna ask you to create a, an admin account so I want my username to be Seahawk, and I'll give you my email address. And then my password, and this is going to be the password um, to log into your, your admin site, so you can give whatever you want. All right, so now that we've finally been able to do that, we should be able to log into our admin system. And if we go over to Postgres um, and we click on Movies 2, not really click on it, I'm sorry. If I go over here and I expand Movies 2, which is the name of our database, and I go over to Schema and under Public, and then under, uh, let's see, we need to refresh this actually. So now we have under Tables here. Django went ahead and created all kinds of tables that it needs to be able to handle users and permissions and stuff like that. So we have like Auth Group, Auth Group Permissions, Auth Permissions. So this is all built in. Uh, really complicated stuff uh, that Django already has included with it. And that's um, one of the selling points I was telling you about with Django, like over something like Node. Uh, it's just that this authentication system is so helpful when it comes to building your typical website. Um, so all that stuff was uh, created for us now. It's in the database. So now if we go over to our uh, Django app, and one of the reasons why I wanted to use this integrated development environment as well is because 
um, it gives me the ability to just be able to click play and um, if everything goes well this thing should be able to debug and run the uh, server for me automatically but uh, if you don't have an environment like this um, it's it's fine you can just run the manage.py and then uh, run server that I was telling you guys about which does the exact same thing that this just did um, it just it fires up the app and like I said I've showed you guys how to do that in previous videos just uh, you know look to that um, for any, any additional information so it looks like uh, the admin's not working because we didn't actually enable it in our URLs file. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. All right, so um, what we need to do, guys, is we need to go under the movie app of our project and go under the URLs file because you actually have to uncomment two lines in here to enable the admin to work. So if you look down here, you can see uh, uncomment the next line to enable the admin. So let's go ahead and do that. And then we also want to uncomment uh, these lines up here so that way the admin works. All right, so now that we've done that, we can go ahead and um, you want to kill your server anytime you make a change like that and then run it again. So we'll go ahead and uh, run the server again. All right, now if we go forward slash admin, the app is going to link to the new Django. And this is another cool feature of Django 1.9, uh, is they have more of a bootstrap look and feel to the admin. So it has a more curvature look. So that's pretty cool. That's something that I, I've not seen yet since I started. Uh, I actually tried to update the Django admin site myself one time to create a uh, extension that people could just download that uses bootstrap and stuff like that. But the sheer amount of templates and work and stuff like that that is involved in up, updating this was like tremendous. So uh, definitely a great job for the community to be able to update this because there is a ton of CSS and uh, Django custom templates and all this stuff that, that makes this thing work. But um, let's go ahead and take a look at some of this stuff. So Django has like all this group authentication so you can create groups, assign people to groups, which gives them specific permissions inside of your, your app. You have users. Here's my super user, which is, um, you can see it's uh, staff status. And if we have uh, multiple users logged into our website or uh, registered to our site, you're going to see all them here. And you can click on them to get further information about them. And then um, you have your uh, sites right here. And this is, um, this is so an actual admin panel can uh, manage multiple Django sites and not just one. But typically, most people aren't going to really use this. Your, your one domain instead of example.com will be whatever domain you have. You know, for instance, noobmovies.com uh, or something along those lines, whatever your domain is. So anyway, guys, uh, that's where we're going to end this video. This was a lot of work. Um, some of this stuff was uh, Windows specific. Some of it was um, uh, virtual environment specific. But ultimately, everything I did is uh, something that you would do regardless on whatever sort of operating system you are, besides, you know, maybe the, the few things, like I said, were, that were, you know, completely specific. But um, ultimately, we, you know, we didn't stray too far down any one particular path, like with Windows or non-Windows or anything like that. So hopefully you guys are able to follow along. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, leave those in the comments or reach out to me through the comment system on YouTube. And uh, please subscribe and, and vote up the video. I appreciate that. And uh, we'll get into more stuff in the, the following videos. Thanks, guys. Have a good day. Bye.